Okay, so last time we talked about getting a mechanical fan for this, but as you can see, once I put the trans cooler lines in, I think we may be stuck with this electrical piece of crap. Unless we can figure out a way to uh, puck those trans lines in farther, mechanical fan's not going to work on this. I'm going to order it anyway because it was only like 30 bucks, so we're going to get one and uh, see what we can do with it. If it don't work, it don't work. Um, so I'm going to order that. I'm going to order the uh, fuel pump. This week I'm hoping to get these floor pans back in here permanently. Get our accelerator pedal in, mock up our parking brake assembly, hoping to get our brake lines in, get them bled, get that done with. We got a whole lot of cleaning to do here so we can fit our running boards, fenders, and doors in here to get them body worked and to get them sprayed. So there's a whole lot of work left to do. Let's get to it. Okay, so yesterday we spent practically the entire day cleaning out this garage, cleaning out the shop. I don't know how stuff got so far away from me, but man, what a mess. Uh, finally got things cleaned up and organized. What I've decided to do, because we have very limited room, we're going to do the running boards, the fenders, paint them, bolt them on. Then we can get out the uh, hood, the hood panels, doors, and door panels. And that should pretty much finish it up for all the painting. We're going to be jumping from body work to brakes, body work to floor pans, uh, just to kind of break it up instead of just straight body working. So that's the plan for today. Let's get to it, man. Well, we got one sanded and body worked. I tell you what, this camera does not do justice as to how big these fenders actually are. They're massive. It's like body working half of a normal car. Just one of these fenders, man. They're massive. Let me get to it.
All right, fellas. Spent most of the day sanding, mudding, mudding, sanding. Let me tell you something. There's a whole lot of real estate there. It don't look like it, but man, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of real estate there. Anyway, we take a little break from uh, all the sanding and mudding, and I just want to say I've been getting a lot of comments about this is not right on the truck, and that's not right on the truck, and uh, the fenders aren't right, the cab isn't right. The only thing I can tell you guys, this, I know when I got it, was pretty much a salvage yard build. Now, that doesn't mean that it's junk. It just means that I know the box was homemade. I wasn't sure about the rear fenders, what gear they were. I, it didn't really even matter to me. The cab, I assume, was a 46 because it is registered in the state of New York as a 1946. And it has a VIN number, a VIN tag. So, I had a guy tell me the cab wasn't right. Um, maybe it's not. Maybe they got a VIN tag from somewhere else and stuck it on there. I don't know. The only thing I do know is this thing is pretty much a rat rod that we're going to put a dress on. That's the best way I can describe it. It's a 1991 S10 chassis. It's got a small block Chevy in it that was built between 1980 and 1985. We know that from the casting numbers. Um, it's got a mishmash of parts that are in the era of the 40s. Let's just say that. Let's just say that they are in the era of the 40s. So as far as I'm concerned, you're probably all right. This is probably those fenders don't belong to this truck. And the cab doesn't belong to that truck. But then you got to look at it for what it is. It's a rat rod. It was put together. I'm good with it. I just want to make it the best that I can make it. That's all. Well, I do know that a lot of guys sink a lot of money into these projects. Um, I personally don't want to be the guy that has to have a sign to say, please do not touch my vehicle or, you know, that kind of stuff, or have a, a rope around it. Personally, I want a vehicle I can drive. I want a vehicle that I don't have to worry about somebody touching the paint. It doesn't matter. That's why I'm throwing a $200 paint job on it, basically, because uh my personal view of it is that I don't want to take a car to a Friday night car show in gray primer, black primer, or red primer. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not my style. Um, it's a personal choice. So I chose to invest a couple hundred dollars in a gallon of paint. And believe me, this is not a professional paint job, nor is it professional body work. There's blemishes. There's... Uh, bumps here and there that doesn't matter to me because like i said this is a driver i want people to come up and touch it i want them to look inside it i want them to sit inside it you know that's to me that's what this is all about so having said that um let's check these four pans out so as they are setting in there right now there's just a little bit of daylight in there that's probably just a little too close because when this engine shakes and shimmies you're going to have it rattling in there. So mainly on this 
focus mainly on this part here that slides in. If we put a relief cut just over the top of the transmission and kind of bent that a little bit. I mean, if we got like three quarters of an inch, I think that's plenty of room. I don't know. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Just put a little relief cut in the bottom of that. And we'll try to just put a little bit of a bend in there just to go around the top of that transmission. Okay, so there it is, round one. Spent the entire day working on these panels. But we have to take advantage of the good weather while it's here. It is unusual to be this warm in New York in February, but I have lived through a few of these. But believe me, we will pay for it probably next year. This year has been a mild winter. It's going to help us greatly getting these parts painted. It's supposed to be nice again tomorrow. Don't know if we can get to shoot in color, but we're certainly going to give it a try. Um, after tomorrow, it's supposed to turn cold again. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping that we can get these panels sprayed tomorrow, um, heat the garage up overnight, and then we'll be good to go uh, to install them. I still want to do the brakes. I'm working on the floor pans. We're still working on the manifolds in there. <laughs> I haven't been able to get the studs out of that one, um, but I didn't put a whole lot of time into it yet. Um, like I said, with the good weather, I wanted to take advantage of it and jump on these panels. So tomorrow, after we skim these panels again, we'll, uh, I'm thinking we could probably jump on that one. Uh, it's just the one manifold that's giving me a hard time. See if we can't get the studs out of that. So there's a lot going on, a lot that's got to happen in the next couple of weeks so we can meet our deadline in the spring. I would like it to be the first day of spring, but I, I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, as long as we can roll this thing out of here in the spring, I'll be happy. Uh, before the first car show, let's put it that way. So we'll be back out here again tomorrow, getting back at it. Okay, so we're out here on the second day of our February thaw. We're going to spend most of the day trying to get some color on these panels, because in about eight hours, all this happiness is going to end. It's going to go back down into the 30s, 20s. So we're going to focus most of our attention on getting these panels close. Like I said, they're not going to be perfect. We're going to get them close. We're going to shoot them, get some heat in this garage overnight, and uh, then we can move on from there. So the less time we spend talking, the closer we get to our goal. Still haven't been able to get the studs out of these manifolds. I'm not going to mess with any more today. I think what we'll do tomorrow is we'll take the cutoff wheel, we'll cut these babies off, and we'll drill and retap them. Or try to drill and retap them. Hopefully we can do it. All right, fellas, there we go. We spent most of the day sanding, priming, sanding again. I got it all wet sanded. She is going to be what we call in the classic car culture. An awesome 20 footer. She's not going to be perfect. I'm not looking for perfection, but it's better than taking her to car shows and primer. And to me, that's like going to the store in your pajamas or your underwear. I just wouldn't do it. Not that there's anything wrong with it, because a lot of people do. So we're going to throw a quick coat of paint on this. 
get these panels mounted and we can move on, man. guys didn't turn out too bad yeah she's got some blemishes she's got some bumps not too bad body work leaves a lot to be desired for sure but like I said she's gonna be a good 20 footer we'll get back at it again tomorrow okay so these panels have had time to dry overnight Body work is not the greatest on them. I know this. These uh, running boards were kind of pieced together. And these lines didn't actually match up. So what I decided to do is just fill this in and smooth it out. And I got these step plates from uh, Shelves of the 40s. We're just going to mount that right in that area. Something like that there. On both sides. Just to kind of dress it up a little bit. So I guess what the plan is today, we're going to get these panels uh, put up out of the way for now. Start the brakes. Well, it would appear that we are a few fittings short. From putting these brakes together so I guess we're gonna have to put it off until I get a chance to go grab them or order them whatever it's always something so I guess we're gonna concentrate on them four pans today and see what we can do with them I do have an idea of how we can get them to clear that transmission without cutting into anything or bending anything I'm thinking that because they dropped into the floor I think if we just shim them up, put a few spacers underneath, that would bring it up just enough to clear that transmission. We'll have to see. We'll give that a try first before we go on trying to cut and bend anything. So let's get to doing that. Okay, so we got these four pans pulled back out. And there's an easy fix to this, I do believe, if it'll work. The floor panel was actually recessed down in there about half to three quarters of an inch. So my thoughts are we can raise this so that the floor pan sits even with the top of there. I think that's going to solve our problem. So that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to try to raise this floor pan up just that much to make it even with the rest of the flooring here in the truck and uh, see what that does for us. Okay, so it's given us the clearance we need in the back here and we still have to probably cut this out right here to get by that uh, transmission hump 
So let me go ahead and make them adjustments and we'll see what we got. All right, so I got away from the idea of using these spacers that I cut. They're just too, uh, I don't know, a little too flimsy maybe. I went and got some of this aluminum U-channel. We're going to cut it so it spans across, give the floor a little more rigidity. I think that'd be a better way to go. So let me get this stuff cut, test fit our floor, and see what we're looking like. Okay, we got one on there. I also went and made the uh, also went and made the necessary cutouts. Okay, we're up level here. Still hitting there, but I think we got to cut two short ones to go on either side to, to lift this up. And I think we'll be good. That'll give us about three quarters of an inch clearance on that transmission. I think that probably should do it, hopefully. Um, so let me go and get those cut and put on here and we'll fit the whole thing together. Okay, floor is in. We got about three quarters of an inch clearance on top of the transmission, so I think we're going to be good there. We also got our new uh, lower radiator hose in. I already cut it to size, so let's go ahead and get that in. Alright, get the hose on. Fit on there pretty good after I trimmed it about four times. We're gonna have to get some longer transmission cooler lines. Still hoping to get that mechanical fan in there. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to, but we're gonna give it a try. Alright, let's see if we can get this accelerator pedal mounted in here. Right about where my foot is. It's gonna be good for me. Right about there. Somewhere in that vicinity. Let me get that drilled in and see what it looks like. Alright, so well, there she is. I got one screw in it. I'll be honest, it's a little tighter than I'd like it to be. The only thing that we could really do is cut into this cowl so we can get a little bit more room here. I don't really want to do that at this point. Um, so I'm thinking that it'll probably be okay. I don't think it's going to be an issue. It's a little close. The seat's going to get raised up. Um, we still have an adjustment on the brake pedal. It's going to come down a little bit. But I think we're going to be good there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill the other hole and uh, permanently mount that. And then we can figure out where on the cowl we need to drill to get our linkage through. All right, fellas, after a lot of adjustment, accelerator pedal is in. Check this out, fellas. We 
have an accelerator pedal. I still got to mount the bracket, stabilizing bracket, but no big deal there. Um, another thing done. All right, let's see if we can drill and tap these manifolds. Get this thing out of the way. I'm tired of working on them. Well, up until this point, we weren't doing too bad. We're on schedule somewhat. <laughs> but you can always tell when your day's not going to go very well when it starts like this. Yep. The cracker. I thought I could get a speed out in there and pull that remaining piece of the stud out, but it wasn't going to be. So, what do we do now? We could always uh, revisit those headers for the third time. Pretty much know they're not going to fit. So, I guess we're going to have to come out of pocket for a new set of manifolds. I was kind of hoping to get these manifolds back in today and start our exhaust system so we can eventually get this thing fired up. This is going to put us behind schedule. Pretty good, I think. Okay, <laughs> so here we are revisiting the headers for the third time. Not looking at it like, can we bolt these things in? Are they going to fit? But what do we have to do to make these things fit? First, let me start on the passenger side, which isn't too bad. Almost would bolt in, but it's hitting the upper control arm. It is the same exact way on the driver's side. I will say this, that if they did go in, we wouldn't have had to change our steering geometry. That works out fine in this situation. But I think it's because they had to set this engine so far back in this frame to accommodate the, well, the, the actual front of the truck. But... It's the control arms that are the issue in this situation with these headers. I'm either going to have to weld the crack up in the manifolds or we're going to have to buy new manifolds. And I'll tell you right now, cheapest pair I've seen was like 200 bucks with shipping. You know, we're probably talking 230, 240. But because we need to have manifolds on this thing just because of the way it's set up, uh, we're going to have to either try to fix that one or uh, buy new ones. This will be the last time we revisit this header idea because they are just not going to fit in this vehicle. Uh, unfortunate, but true. So I think at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to box these headers back up, put them away, and we're going to go in there and start working on our brakes. See if we can't get these brake lines in. We got our new fittings, and uh, let's take care of that today. Okay, so we got our proportioning valve here. We got our copper tubing. We're just going to bend it around this pipe a couple times. And uh, make sure you got your fittings on first before you flare the ends. That's all. All right, we got our pigtails made. Let's go see if she fits on the old master cylinder.
All right, guys, there she is. She's all plumbed in. I'm just going to go ahead and crack the bleeders open on all four tires and uh, let this thing gravity bleed a little bit. But in the meanwhile, let's uh, see if we can't get this parking brake assembly mounted in our cab. It's going to be really tight in there. Yes, sir, that's going to be very tight, but we really don't have a whole lot of choices. Well, it's kind of looking like we're going to have to move this uh, fuse box over just a little bit. I mean, we have the room to do that. I just, uh, at this point, didn't really want to start drilling holes in the firewall, but it kind of looks like that's what we're going to have to do in order to get this thing to... It's going to hit if I... Uh, press it all the way so that's our next move I guess we're gonna have to just move this over just a little bit and uh, go from there man Well, this is going to take some extra doing here because we got the bundle of wires already gone through the grommet. I really don't want to drill another hole. I mean, patching the firewall right now is not ideal. But uh, I'm going to have to think about this. Maybe we can just build a bracket that holds this out a little bit farther. To accommodate that bundle of wires and we have enough room now with that over to press our pedal all the way ideally I wouldn't want to have it that close but I don't think there's really a lot of options here I guess that's where we're gonna leave it this week I got to think about this uh, fuse box situation here, and uh, we'll get we'll get it mounted in there. But I, I'm trying to do this without destroying our firewall. Could have been something that we had planned for earlier, but that's how it goes sometimes, you know, with things like this. However, we did manage to get some body panels painted. We got our brakes done for the most part; they just need to be bled. And we technically did get our parking brake assembly in-ish. We got our accelerator pedal and linkage on. We finally got our lower radiator hose and our radiator filled with fluid. So she's got oil. She's got antifreeze. She's got everything but an exhaust system. So now we're talking manifolds again. I may try to weld that manifold. I may pick up new ones. I don't know. Uh, one thing I do know, those headers for the third time now are not going to fit this vehicle. That much we do know. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Hope to see you next week, and I'm sure we'll get a lot more done. 
we're going to keep rolling on this thing. Hopefully, we'll get as much done next week as we did this week. Till then, take it easy, man.